I'm Dr. Iman Ramzi Al-Adawi, Assistant Professor of Chest Diseases, Faculty of Medicine, Ain Shams University. This is part two of our lecture, which is pneumonia. We are going to talk about diagnosis of pneumonia, but before we are talking of uh, about diagnosis of pneumonia, we should know what about the aim for diagnosing pneumonia. Aim of diagnosis of pneumonia are the following. We should give a definite diagnosis of pneumonia. Second is to evaluate the degree or severity of pneumonia. And lastly is to define the causative pathogen of pneumonia. What are the methods for diagnosis of pneumonia? Methods for diagnosis of pneumonia include history and physical examination or clinical manifestations. And this is the clinical diagnosis. Second, is radiological diagnosis that include chest x-ray, the plain chest x-ray as usual, plus or minus chest CT. Third method of diagnosis is laboratory investigations, and this is the laboratory diagnosis. And finally is pathogen identification, which is a bacteriological diagnosis. As regards clinical manifestations or clinical diagnosis for pneumonia, we should know that the onset of pneumonia is acute and the clinical manifestations of the patient may be presented by respiratory symptoms or local chest symptoms and extra pulmonary symptoms or general manifestations. As regards symptoms, we are going to talk about general symptoms or extra pulmonary symptoms. The patients usually or many patients have had an upper respiratory tract infection for several days before the onset of pneumonia. The onset is usually acute. There may be chills. The temperature rises during the first few hours to 39 to 40 degree, or there is fever. The pulse accelerates, or this is tachycardia. But it's very important that the patient may be presented by gastrointestinal symptoms, so it may be mistaken as acute abdominal inflammation like anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. These gastrointestinal symptoms are mainly found in children and in patients, those uh, are not capable for expectoration of a sputum, so it will be swallowed and the patient may be presented by gastrointestinal symptoms. Local chest symptoms or respiratory symptoms may include sharp chest pain in the involved hemithorax, and this is known as pleurisy or pleuritic chest pain. The patient may be presented by cough, which is initially dry. Then the patient will be presented with pinkish or blood flaked sputum, or it is also called blood tinged sputum. And the patient may be presented by dyspnea as well. As regards examination or local examination or signs for the chest, uh, the acutely ill patient is usually tachypneic and may be observed to use accessory muscles for respiration and, ev and even to exhibit nasal flaring. There may be fever, tachycardia, frank shock, but it is unusual except in the later severe stage of infection. Locally, there is crepitation and may be bronchial breathing. As regards radiological assessment for pneumonia, first is chest X-ray or the usual chest X-ray examination. Uh, chest X-ray is more sensitive than physical examination. So if there's suspicion of pneumonia and we find uh, the clinical or local examination is free, we must perform x-ray examination because it is more sensitive for early detection of pneumonia than clinical examination. We usually use the posterior anterior and lateral chest radiographs, which are valuable to detect pneumonia. Also, chest x-ray is very important because it will, uh, it, it will show whether this pneumonia is looper, segmental, or uh, whatever, or, uh, or 
whether there is affection of more than one segment or one loop or it is unilateral or bilateral. So it is very important to suggest severity of pneumonia. Also, X-ray may show if there is any planting of the costophrenic angle because if it is present, this means pleural effusion may exist. Pleural effusion means more severe pneumonia and also it's very important for sampling for bacteriological diagnosis if the patient cannot expectorate well because bacteriological diagnosis is very important to choose the appropriate antibiotic later on in treatment. Chest CT is more sensitive for early detection of pneumonia than clinical examination and even then chest x-ray. It's also very important for detection of small pleural effusion which may not be even visible by the chest x-ray. It is very important also to detect any pleural loculation and possible empyema or early empyema because if there is suspicion of pyema or there is impending empyema by chest CT, this will turn the patient into a severe case of pneumonia and this will require an urgent surgical intervention. CT is very important for differential diagnosis of pneumonia and the most important differential diagnosis for CT to differentiate are pulmonary infarction, bronchogenic carcinoma, and bronchiectasis. How to identify the causative pathogen for pneumonia or how to reach the bacteriological diagnosis for pneumonia for culture and sensitivity and pathogen identification? Pathogen identification may be through one of the following. Sputum, nasotracheal suction, bronchospe bronchoscope, endotracheal tube, blood culture, pleural effusion aspiration, any of these, uh, any of these uh, 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 expectorants or any of these samples should be sent later on for gram stain, culture and sensitivity. We may also use serological testing or immunological testing as the use of PCR polymerase chain reaction that may amplify the pneumococcal DNA and improve the potential for detection. Pathogen culture and sensitivity. Before using any antibiotic, the culture of blood of the expectorated parent sputum or any um, sample, as we mentioned, if it is through the endotracheal tube or nasotracheal suction or pleural aspirate, any culture and sensitivity will take about 48 to 78 hours to identify the causative organism and its sensitivity to the proper antibiotics for, to be used for management of pneumonia. What about the laboratory assessment of pneumonia and what are the most common laboratory investigations used for diagnosis of pneumonia? First is CBC or complete blood count, the peripheral white blood cell, white blood cells, uh, must be examined and usually there is increased total leukocytic count which if present it favors the diagnosis of pneumonia. ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate increased ESR also favors diagnosis of pneumonia. As regards arterial blood gases as a laboratory investigation, it is very important to examine the patient and diagnose if this if this pneumonia is severe or not, because it's very important to uh, decide whether this patient can be treated within the hospital or as an outpatient, and if this patient is in need for ICU admission or mechanical ventilation or whatever, so it indicates severity of pneumonia or diagnose severity of pneumonia. What about the main complications of pneumonia? Sepsis, and in about 15 to 20 percent of patients, bacteria may enter the bloodstream to cause bacteremia via the lymphatics and thoracic duct. As a complication, there also may be a lung abscess, empyema, and in about 5 to 10 percent of the patients, 
infection may extend into the pleural space and result in empyema. Empyema means pus within the pleural space or pleural cavity. There may be pleural effusion, pleurisy, ARDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome, acute respiratory failure, and there may be also spread of infection to extra pulmonary areas with the development of extra pulmonary infections. With the invasion of the bloodstream by pneumococci, this may lead to serious metastatic disease at a number of extra pulmonary sites, so it may cause meningitis, arthritis, pericarditis, endocarditis, uh, peritonitis, and otitis media. Is it a case of pneumonia? We are talking about differential diagnosis of pneumonia in part 3 of this lecture.